we do not always grasp the full impact of what Jesus did. Yet here in the part of the story that Luke opens before us, Jesus is enacting absolute truth and authority in a very daily, simple story. It's done with a great fanfare, even though the circumstances into which they enter has a sort of fanfare feel to it. In the midst of it, Jesus is just being Jesus. And have we decided for ourselves to believe what his claim is, or do we make it up for ourselves? He sent two disciples to get a donkey. How many of you have ever been sent to get a donkey? <laughs> Not recently? No, I haven't either. He tells them exactly what would unfold. And it did unfold, just as Jesus had told them. Now, we can go through all kinds of thought processes and ideas and everything. Oh, Jesus planned it all ahead. He, along the way, he talked to somebody, and they talked to somebody, and they made sure that if they got this code word, it would be okay. Great. I'm not going to argue with that. But Jesus was just being Jesus. He said to his disciples, go get the donkey. If they ask why, tell them the Lord needs it. That's exactly what happened. They went to get the donkey. They were asked, why are you taking that donkey? And they said, the Lord needs it. That was it. Absolute clarity, simple truth, the authority of Jesus calling something into being. Truth and authority will out itself, if you understand what that term is. In other words, what Jesus has called into being will be accomplished. We hear this throughout Scripture. In the Old Testament we hear, and God said, let there be light. And there was light by the spoken word of God. In Isaiah, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return empty but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. And we hear Jesus putting it into practice with his disciples as they enter Jerusalem. As the donkey carried Jesus into Jerusalem, people spread their cloaks on the road like a royal welcome. They celebrated and they sang praise. But the Pharisees, oh, the dreaded Pharisees of Scripture, they didn't like what they were seeing. And they told Jesus, rebuke your disciples. You see, they thought that they had the authority to talk to Jesus in such a way. Even after all the interactions that Jesus had with the scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees over the three years of his itinerant ministry, they still thought they could tell him what to do and that he would do it. Yet every one of the experiences that we hear written in Scripture tell us completely the opposite. Have you ever come across a moment to use the line that uh, is, is this idea that um, if, if, you, if you keep saying the same thing over and over again and nobody believes it or acts on it, it's the epitome of stupidity. Because what you're saying has no impact. This is what the Pharisees' impact was on Jesus. Nothing. But he did have a response. I just love Jesus' response in this passage. He exhibited no worry, no concern or sense of being intimidated. He spoke with authority and he laid out the truth. 
In Colossians, we hear this happening as well. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in Him all things were created, things on heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. What did Jesus say that was so fun in my estimation? He says, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Two things I love about this simple truth. First, Jesus' invitation for us all to believe and to follow was open to all people in all time. Anyone who would choose to do so would be set free from the intimidation of the untruth and the false authorities. In our faithfulness to Jesus, we should be the peacemakers of our time and not be afraid or confused about what to do and how to do it with other people. It's quite simple. Tell your story of how God, through Jesus, lives and moves in your life and invite others to experience it. But even if no one follows, Jesus still invites everyone. And second, if the followers stayed silent, and that meant from the moment that Jesus spoke those words right up to today, even for you and me, if they keep silent, Jesus said, the stones will cry out. If we do not give witness through our praise and our sharing and our living in daily life among the people, the world that God has created, sharing God's invitation, Jesus' invitation to come and follow me. The stones will cry out, even the stones, God's cre creation, will cry out in praise to God. Do we want to be bested by stones? Or do we want to be people that would become living action of the love of God? On this Palm Sunday, may we be found in the crowd of those that also grieved on Friday and celebrated on the day of resurrection.
Jim is going to lead us in our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you came to us in humility, reaching out to all God's little ones with mercy and compassion. You ask us to do the same. So today we pray for all those who find themselves in humble circumstances, for the homeless in our community and for refugees wherever they take shelter, for the poor and all who find themselves without resources to cope these days, for those who live in isolated communities in Canada and around the world, lacking access to care, resources, and technology others take for granted. Strengthen them in your mercy, and humble us, lest we forget how much we have to be grateful for. Lord Jesus Christ, hear us as we pray for all those who have been humbled by life's unexpected terms during the months of the pandemic. We remember before you those who face illness, pain, or injury. Those who have known death or disaster, fear or failure. And all who struggle with anxiety and uncertainty. We pray for victims of crime and those who suffer through the misjudgment or mistake of others. And we pray for those who suffer because of the consequences of their own actions and choices. Embrace them in your mercy and humble us, lest we imagine we can live lives untouched by trouble. Lord Jesus Christ, hear us as we pray for those who have not learned the lessons of humility yet, for those who live carelessly or drive recklessly, endangering themselves and others, for those who abuse the trust and power in their positions, betraying those whose interests are in their hands. And we pray for those who mislead others for gain or indulge their fame with no thought for the example they set. Humble them in your mercy, and humble us if we are tempted to ignore the consequences of our own actions. Lord Jesus Christ, as we walk, as we watch you walk to your cross this week, fill us with humble gratitude that you go before us into any challenge or crisis we may face. Give us courage to stand with others facing injustice or prejudice, and give us words to speak out for those at risk at home or abroad. For you have given us words to pray for the coming of your kingdom, your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. So we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn, When I Survey the Woman's Cross, Voices United, 149. 